Good afternoon, Chamber members. I'd like to call this meeting to order. For those of you I haven't yet met, my name is Sabrina Binkley, Head of School at Spruce Tree Montessori and Chair of the Fairbanks Chamber Board of Directors. I wanted to give a quick shout out to Marissa and Janelle who conducted last week's Chamber Forum in my absence as it was the first day of school for us at Spruce Tree Montessori and it was all hands on deck as we welcomed our new three and four year olds as well as all of our first graders into our community. And I just couldn't bear to pull myself away from the excitement of the midday around here. Recess, lunch and nap time. So thanks Marissa and Janelle. So I'd like to take a moment as we do each week to thank our executive partners whose logos you saw on the screen before we began our program. These businesses are truly the backbone of business in our community and a pillar of strength for the Fairbanks Chamber. A full list of our executive partners can be found on our website. Welcome to Chambers, the Fairbanks Chambers Political Forum for candidates running for Alaska Senate Seat B and Alaska House Seats 2 and 6. The Greater Fairbanks Chamber of Commerce is a nonpartisan organization which advocates for the conditions that will allow businesses of all sizes to prosper in our region. We are focused on the betterment of all of our members by working with local, state, and federal government officials. The Chamber strives to represent its membership and address the multiple needs of the business community. The intent behind our hosting of political forums is to help you, our audience, understand your choices during this fall's election cycle. The candidates here today will appear on the ballot for the August 18th primary election, that's next Tuesday. Please note that you have a choice this fall whether to vote in person or by mail using an absentee ballot. The application deadline for the primary has passed, but you still have the option to vote early or vote on election day, Tuesday, August 18th. Check elections.alaska.gov for more details. However, you do still have time to apply for an absentee ballot for the October 6th borough and city elections at fnsb.us or for the November 3rd Alaska general election at elections.alaska.gov. Now I'd like to introduce you to our moderator today who has volunteered to lead today's discussion. Brittany Hartman serves on the Chamber's Government Relations Committee and Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. And she is a recent graduate of the Leadership Fairbanks Class of 2020, sponsored by the Chamber. She's lived in Fairbanks for 19 years. Brittany earned her bachelor's degree in political science from UAF, and in December, she'll graduate with her master's in business administration, also from UAF. Brittany has spent 10 years working in Alaska state government, including the state legislature and the governor's administration. Brittany is now the Fairbanks Branch Manager and Government Relations Liaison for the Associated General Contractors of Alaska. She thoroughly enjoys being able to use her government experience to help advocate for the construction industry on the local, state, and federal level. Welcome, Brittany. The mic is yours. Brittany, I can't hear you. Thank you, Sabrina. Sorry about that. I'd like to kick off the forum with a word of thanks to the candidates who have joined us today. Thank you for your willingness to serve in public office and for the work you will do on behalf of Fairbanks residents and businesses. Campaigning and being a representative for Alaskans is a hard job, and we appreciate you stepping up and taking on that responsibility. So again, thank you. As I introduce each of you, please wave so the audience knows who you are. The candidates for Alaska Senate District B are Senator John Coghill and Robert Myers. The candidates for Alaska House District 2 are Representative Steve Thompson. Thank you. And Dave Sell, who did not respond to our invitation to join us today. The candidates for Alaska House District 6 are Mike Kronk, Julie Morris, and Ryan Smith. Thank you for joining us today and welcome to the forum. I also want to extend the Chamber's sincere thanks to our political forum series sponsors, Hedgecock Group Real Estate, Mac Federal Credit Union, the Alaska Oil and Gas Association, Hale & Associates, and Doy Unlimited. These organizations support informed voting and engagement with the important issues facing our state. 
Now let's do a quick review of our event format. The candidates will be asked a series of questions that are either a short answer or yes, no. Each candidate will be given the same amount of time to answer each question. We have also reserved time at the end for audience questions. If any of our online audience have questions throughout the presentation, please type them into the chat box on YouTube. Chamber staff will review the questions and select a few to ask the candidates. We have a limited time here today, so I encourage the audience to engage with the candidates outside of this forum to learn more, to learn more about them, their philosophies, and their vision for the state of Alaska. Now to the candidates. I'd like to give you just a few last minute instructions before we begin with your opening statements. As I ask each question, I will give you a time limit. I'll also indicate what order you will answer in. Candidates for Senate seat B will always answer back to back, as will candidates for House seat six. This will help viewers understand who is running for each seat. After each person has finished speaking, I will indicate the next candidate, just so we all stay in the same order. I'd like to remind you that our official timekeeper will start the timer on the screen when you begin speaking. Please stop when your time is up so we can cover all of the questions. The timer will briefly flash red, so if you are in the middle of a sentence when the time expires, please quickly finish. If necessary, we will mute your line to keep the forum moving along. But we won't have to do that today because you guys will all be on time. So with that, let's get started. Each candidate will now give a one minute introduction. To help you get to know the candidates, we ask them to cover two questions in their introduction. One, what motivated you to run for office? And two, what is the one thing you will need to learn if you win this seat in November? We will start with Senate seat B, Senator Coghill, followed by Mr. Myers. Next, we will continue with House seat two, Representative Thompson. And finally, House seat six, Mr. Cronk, followed by Ms. Morris, and then Mr. Smith. Senator Coghill, please start us off with your one minute opening statement. Good morning, thank you for the forum. What motivated me to run uh, was uh, state's a new state and we gotta build an economy. So I like to be a part of that. Uh, growing uh, Alaska because sharing it with the federal government has been a big, big deal. So uh, kind of eking our way through uh, land management issues. Probably the next big thing was uh, family. Uh, family's been under attack uh, in many ways, uh, sometimes through regulation. And so uh, uh, that's whether it's schooling issues, uh, pro-life issues, uh, or just the primacy of the family. And then Government needs to be limited. You know, I have to continually work on limiting government, both in authority and spending. And those have motivated me primarily uh, to help grow Alaska. Man, I left Thank some time you. on the table, man. Yeah. Thank you, Senator Goghill. All right, with that, we'll move on to Mr. Myers. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Robert Myers here. I'm uh, born and raised here in the interior, uh, originally Salsha, then Fairbanks, uh, currently North Pole. Uh, went to uh, high school and college here. And uh, these days I uh, drive a truck for a living, got a wife and three kids at home. Uh, I got into this race because our state has been doing things the same way for about 40 years now, it seems like. And over the last uh, five to 10 years, conditions have changed. Uh, whether you're talking about oil prices, whether you're talking about the size of the state, which has been steadily growing, and, or a number of other issues, and it's time for us to do something different. And I don't see too many people in the legislature willing to own up to the fact that conditions have changed. They seem to want to just bridge to, uh, well, things will go back to normal soon, and it's, it's not going there. So I'm do something different. Thank you, Mr. Myers, appreciate that. Representative Thompson. Thank you. Thank you, Brittany, for, uh, for being our host today. Uh, I've been down in Juneau for five terms, and uh, I, I really feel like this is gonna be one of the most important terms uh, coming up this next two years that the state is ever gonna face. We've reduced spending to a degree, but we are going to have to really reduce it this coming year. I feel like my experience down there dealing with all of the different departments and with the administration people, 
Uh, I've learned a lot, and I think that's going to be very important this year. We've got to grow Alaska. We've got to uh, uh, encourage resource development, get rid of regulations that are that are hamstringing us in those areas. And uh, we have to watch over the people of Alaska. They have needs. We have uh, police, fire, uh, public safety, prisons, the, the legal system, roads that need to be addressed. And I feel like I've got a, a good head start on that. So it looks like my time's up. Thanks. Thank you, Representative Thompson. Mr. Cronk. Good afternoon. Um, I'm running. I'm a lifelong Alaskan um, that uh, really cares about Alaska. And running for District 6, we have a vast, vast uh, district. And, and I really want to protect the rural way of life. And, um, you know, uh, working with uh, Representative Tallarico, you know, I've learned a lot about the district. Um, I grew up in Northway. Um, I was blessed to have an amazing community to grow up in and a school system with amazing teachers and coaches. So I went to the University of Alaska Fairbanks, got my teaching degree, went back home and taught for 14 years um, in Northway and then 11 in Togue, um, retired, uh, 25 years of public service as a teacher, 25 years of public service as a fishing game advisory committee. I'm an elected official on a regional school board. Um, I, I love my state. I love the people. I want to make sure our state is prosperous. We have a lot of things to work on, but uh, I look forward to getting down to Juneau and uh, being that person down there that represents us. Great. Thank you, Mr. Kronk. Ms. Morris. Okay. Thank you for having this forum. Thanks, Britt, for stepping up and putting it together. Julie Morris from Anderson. Uh, I've been here about 12 years. I am a business owner. I uh, built a and b here in the Denali Borough. Um, one of the reasons why I'm running for office is because of what I've seen happen to the economy lately during the pandemic and the changes in the upheav upheaval in the uh, economy is of great concern to me. Um, on top of that, we're already dealing with a budget that uh, is uh, going to be a huge challenge, there's no doubt. Um, we're going to have to do some uh, pretty serious belt tightening. We'll have to really just determine, okay, what is essential services for the state and focus on those. Um, watching the pandemic, um, one of the reasons why I did run is um, I was very concerned about how we are making decisions in our government that are not necessarily based on facts and figures. And I think Ms. we Morris, really need to get back, back to that. finish your last sentence. Okay, uh -huh. thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Morris, appreciate that. Mr. Smith. Hello, I am Brian Smith. I am, uh, I've got 25 years of management experience in a variety of fields from construction to retail to finance. Uh, as well as in education. I'm running because the number one impact uh, on the state this year and is the same as it has been the past five years, which is the state budget and spending. Uh, the state has been spending uh, an extraordinary amount of money and now we're out of almost all of the CBR. We've spent uh, about 12 billion under the Walker administration. So we have very little left uh, to leverage to help our budget, which is gonna be very bad this year. And uh, I want to make sure we're protecting the PFD for the residents of Alaska. The private sector economy needs a boost. The PFD is the largest boost that the private sector economy within Alaska has. And over the past years, we've lost about $10,000 as individuals that we would be able to put into the private sector economy, resulting in about $8 billion worth of income and revenue generated through the private sector. In Alaska. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Appreciate that. Thank you, everyone, for your introductions. We are now going to move on to our first question. So first, we have a series of questions based on the Fairbanks Chamber's advocacy agenda and the issues suggested by Chamber members. For the first question, you're going to have 30 seconds to respond. We will start with Senate seat B again with Mr. Myers, followed by Senator Coghill. And they will be followed by House Seat 2, Representative Thompson, and then House Seat 6, Ms. Morris, Mr. Smith, and Mr. Cronk. So question one, 
The coronavirus pandemic has negatively affected businesses throughout Alaska. We all hoped that the disruptions which started in March would be temporary and we would all be back to normal by now. Instead, new COVID-19 case counts are rising. Some states are reclosing businesses in an attempt to prevent their hospitals from becoming overwhelmed and the enhanced unemployment funding from the federal government has just run out, potentially leading to a new wave of financial hardship. The question is, what advice would you give to business owners trying to find the right balance between safety and economic concerns? Mr. Myers, 30 seconds are on the clock. I think at this point, we're gonna to have to look less at prevention, more at mitigation. Uh, We've come to the end of being able to shut down and being able to have people preserve their livelihoods. So we need to be able to save business, save jobs. Rates of other things like that are skyrocketing. So we're gonna to have to do what we can to try to get back to normal uh, as best as possible. Recognize that while our cases are going up, our hospitalization rates and our deaths are actually staying pretty low. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Senator Coghill. Thank you. It is true when pandemic first started, what we were looking for was how to bend the curve. We've done that significantly, but we've also driven our economy uh, to a flat, flat place. Uh, my heart goes out to anybody who's in the hospitality business or the tourism business. So bureaucratically trying to push things through uh, that we've received from the federal government has been one of the top jobs for us. Uh, but at this point, uh, personal responsibility and uh, government help where we can. Great timing, Senator Collingdale. Okay, next up, we have Representative Thompson. Thank you. We're in unprecedented times, I'll tell you that. Businesses are suffering, and uh, my encouragement to businesses is to follow the protocols, make sure that your employees are wearing masks, uh, sanitize the areas where public are coming in, and uh, we, we're going to have to take care of ourselves, and I hope that we can continue to do it. Some of the monies that we have got from the federal government has not been put out yet to small businesses, and I want to encourage that the administration gets that done because it will help a lot of small business owners. Thank you, Representative Thompson. Next up, we have House Seat 6 with Ms. Morris. Thank you. That is the most excellent question since I am a small business owner. I am in the hospitality business. I am in the Denali borough and we've been hit very, very hard. Um, my focus will be to rebuild the economy, not just here, but through the whole state. Um, I don't, unless you own a business, I, it, it's really hard to difficult and to explain to people what we, what, what has happened to us. So, um, I will be working to help them as much as I can. Thank you, Ms. Morris. Next up, also from House Seat 6, we have Mr. Smith. Well, I would say the best advice we can give business owners is to uh, find the av avenues that work best for you. Masks, uh, washing, cleaning the areas that the customers are going to be uh, spending time around. Uh, limiting the number of people that you're going to have within your business if you're going to be in closed spaces, promote more outside activities, um, because we want to make sure everybody in Alaska is safe, but we want to make sure that our business sector is able to still perform and get the revenue they need to stay in business and keep Alaskans employed. Thank you, Mr. Smith. And again, with House Seat 6, we have Mr. Kronk. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, once this hit, I was working construction and I got laid off immediately and we still haven't went back to work. Uh, jobs have just disappeared um, for my boss and, and around the state. Um, I think, you know, no one knew what was really going to happen with this virus. And I think uh, Governor Dunleavy has done a great job at dealing with it. But our economy has slowed down. Um, just traveling around the state, you can see how things have slowed down. We need to do everything we can for our small businesses. They are the backbone to Alaska. So we need to continue to fund them in any way to get them back. Thank you, Mr. Kronk. Thank you all for your responses. As a reminder to the audience, if you have a question you would like to have asked of the candidates, please submit it in the online chat box. 
For our next question, we will start with House Seat 2, Representative Thompson, then House Seat 6, Mr. Smith, Mr. Cronk, and then Ms. Morris, followed by Senate Seat B, Senator Coghill, followed by Mr. Myers. And you will have 60 seconds to respond. So question two, Alaskans have recently engaged in an intense debate over budget priorities at the state level. At all levels, elected officials are being faced with difficult choices about services and revenue, which will have far-reaching implications for our community. Watching this debate over the last few years, the Fairbanks Chamber has advocated for a long-term fiscal plan, which utilizes earnings from the permanent fund, makes government more efficient, encourages resource development and business-friendly practices, and includes passage of an appropriate and timely capital budget. The question is, how will you balance the ever-increasing cost of providing essential government services with the need to balance the state budget? Representative Thompson, it's a big question, so please do your best in 60 seconds. Thank you for the question. Uh, this is going to be probably the hardest year that I've seen down there in the 10 years I've been there. We have got to come up with ways to, uh, to balance our budget. We have a POMV on the earnings uh, reserve account. This last year, we this year that we're in, we drew three three billion ninety million dollars from it. Uh, 2022 budget that we'll be working on, we're projected to with our five percent just be drawing three billion dollars, and we're going to have a shortfall. We're going to have to figure out how to make up that shortfall. There's a lot of things that are going to be discussed. Everything from sales tax to income tax. I I don't want to see us go that way because people are already hurting and we're going to take care of, uh, take more of their money. That would be very devastating. So we're going to have to try to balance the budget with the best we can and uh, come up with some way to keep providing necessary services. It's going to be a tough year and uh, I'm looking forward to being down there to be part of it. Thank you, Representative Thompson. Again, excellent timing. Followed up with House Seat 6, Mr. Smith. This is going to be a difficult budget year with uh, the reduction in oil production, the, the cut in oil prices, uh, and the lacking tourism business, which is one of the large, uh, largest areas in, within our economy for income. Uh, I was up in Denali and they, had, they were down 90% from the years before. What we need to do is take spending back to what is uh, constitutionally mandated and go from there. We need to start finding more efficient and effective ways to perform the duties in which we're required to do. And we can make sure that there are no sacred cows. Uh, right now between K through 12 education and the university, that's about a third of the budget. We can't have that much money going to one location when we have so many different services to provide to the citizens of Alaska. We need to look for new revenue sources, but we cannot be taxing the people of Alaska. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Continuing with House Seat 6, Mr. Kronk. Um, you know, listening, the key word is essential. We really, truly have to identify the essentials that we have to, you know, that's we're constitutionally mandated to fund. Um, we hear how, you know, this is going to be the hardest session, you know, and I, I choose not to look at things in, in the negative light. I'm going to say, hey, this could be a really positive session because we get to really identify these things and work on those things and, and get those things funded and continually to develop our resources. Um, we all know that you're not going to develop a resource tomorrow. It takes years to get this done. We need to be able to reduce these regulations and um, build these resources responsibly across the state. We're not in a period of time where we can implement any taxes on people. Um, we need to look at, per se, education um and not have your hand out for more money we need to be able to figure out how more how much more efficient we can spending the money that we have thank you mr Kronk. and continuing again with house seat six we have miss morris thank you that's an excellent question um i look at that word balance balance is going to be really important um, we do need to cover our essential government services and take a good look at define those to, uh, for what, they, what we really need. Once again, I think we need to take a look at the Medicaid budget 
and find out where can we cut in the Medicaid budget that you know is not part of those essential government services. I think that's one area where we could take a look at and probably come up with some decent cuts. We're also going to have to look at education because it's completely different than what it was last year. A lot of parents have decided to homeschool, which means our education budget is going to be drastically different than it has been in, in the past. And that's due to the, the pandemic. So um, there are two of the big drivers in our budget and we really need to take a look at them and find out what is the best way we can balance the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Morris. And following with that, we have Senate seat B, Senator Coghill. Yeah, probably what we're gonna have to do. Uh, we have to figure out uh, how we use that percent of market value, as Steve said, uh, of that $3 billion, uh, we can do a dividend out of that. Uh, we can also uh, uh, fund government with a good portion of that, 2.7 or so, which with the low oil prices will force us to uh, uh, have huge downward pressure on government. Uh, it will be a prioritization process. There's no doubt about it. Uh, all the people in Alaska are gonna be involved in it. It's uh, not gonna be easy, as some people have said, but it's also a time for us to uh, kind of change some of our thinking, whether it's in education, our Medicaid budget, those two are big, big issues that uh, cost a state, but they also deliver huge services to Alaska. I think we're just gonna have to do some of those differently. Most of the other budgets have been cut. University uh, is in for a change and I'm willing to work on that change. I think uh, the cost is gonna go down and the structure is gonna change. Thank you, Senator Coghill. Again, with Senate seat B, we have Mr. Myers. So in the short term, uh, probably the two uh, places that we can look at quickly for efficiencies are gonna be at the University of Alaska and in the Department of Transportation budget. In the long term, in order to attack things, we will have to address K through 12 education and our Medicaid budget and just, just change how we operate in there. Um, it, that, that's what's going to have to happen here. Somebody's going to have to go into these formulas and say, okay, let's uh, let's move some things around. Let's change how we operate, not just change how much money is going to it. Uh, we're, we're really going to have to ask ourselves, is it time for uh, the people of Alaska to have to pay a little something into their government? And uh, yeah, that's going to hurt. Let's, let's face it. Pretty much any choice that the state makes at this point is going to hurt, whether we're talking about uh, cutting the state budget, taxes, cutting the PFD. If we want to offset that uh, that pain from uh, the possibility of a tax, paying out a full statutory PFD is going to be our best bet to help our individuals and the economy. Thank you very much, Mr. Myers. And thank you, candidates. We will now move into a rapid fire round of yes, no questions. You should have your red or green cards in front of you. For those who cannot see the colors red and green very well, the green card has a check mark to indicate yes, and the red card has an X to indicate no. If you don't have your cards, you could also use your thumb, thumbs up or thumbs down. For each question, please hold up the card that corresponds with your answer and keep it up until all candidates have responded. First, we'll start with a warm up question. During the coronavirus closures, did you ever have trouble finding a store with toilet paper in stock? Okay, we have one no. Okay, thank you. Looks like everyone knows how to do this. So, all right, here we go with the rapid fire questions. Question three, the Fair Share Act, a ballot initiative, which will appear on the November 3rd general election ballot, would increase the state tax rate on oil production and discourage future investment by oil companies in Alaska. Would you encourage someone listening today to vote for this initiative? Great, thank you very much. Question four, rapid fire again. Would you support implementing a broad-based tax? such as a state income or sales tax to pay for state services. Okay, thank you candidates. Question five, the Alaska Industrial Development and Export Authority, also known as ADA, 
has approved funding to proceed with the development of a road connecting the Ambler Mining District to the Dalton Highway. It is commonly known as the Ambler Road. Do you support the state's involvement with building this road? Thank you, candidates. Last rapid fire question. If a military dependent arrives in Alaska with a professional license from another state, such as a nursing or architecture license, do you think that the state of Alaska should expedite a temporary professional license while the person completes any Alaska specific requirements? Great, thank you very much. Okay, now we have two more prepared questions for the candidates. Audience, this is your final reminder. If you have a question you would like to have asked, please submit it in the chat box now for consideration by our chamber staff. Candidates, you will have 60 seconds to respond to the next question. We will start with House Seat 6, Mr. Cronk, Ms. Morris, and Mr. Smith, followed by Senate Seat B, Mr. Myers, then Senator Coghill, then House Seat 2, Representative Thompson. So question seven. The Fairbanks Chamber is composed of member organizations who rely heavily on the University of Alaska to educate and train qualified employees, perform the research which makes us successful in a challenging Arctic environment, and attract new talent to interior Alaska. More than ever, our businesses need an educated workforce ready to develop creative solutions and get our economy moving after the threat of COVID-19 has passed. In addition, the University of Alaska Fairbanks is a major economic driver in our region. Because of its unique position at the edge of the Arctic, UAF is able to attract outside funding to support world-class research. These federal and philanthropic dollars, as well as the good jobs they attract, will go to universities or organizations outside Alaska if the research programs are dismantled or the campus infrastructure disintegrates around them. The question is, after the budget cuts imposed by the current administration, do you think the University of Alaska is being funded at a sustainable level to serve the needs of the businesses and future workforce of Alaska? Explain why or why not. Mr. Kronk from House Seat 6, you have 60 seconds. Well, as a proud graduate of the University of Alaska Fairbanks, um, I, I do think we're funded well. I think we've gotten involved in way too many things. I think the university system needs to identify the important and the things that they're world renowned for. Our engineering program is, is world renowned. We need to fund that. Um, I believe the teaching program, we need a world-class teaching program. In order for education to be successful, we have to produce our own teachers to go back into their home villages. And, and we know they're going to stay there. We're, we don't have teachers going there for two years and bailing on the school system. So I do believe the university system uh, does have the money. We are just bloating ourselves into different areas that we shouldn't be involved in. If, uh, if there's welding classes, let's defer those to the private sector. There's plenty of people that will teach welding classes. And so we need to look at those kind of things. If, if, if it's, it's something that's you know, offered in a private sector, let's get, a, get out of it in the university system. Thank you, Mr. Kronk. Continuing with House Seat 6, we have Ms. Morris. Thank you. That's Thank an, you. Uh, um, a really good question. Um, university, as always, has been um, an economic driver for the interior. That's It's very important to keep that going. However, I do think that is overly uh, centralized and devotes too many resources to the, what they call the command and control structure. It's too top heavy. So we have to take a look at that because that's where all those administrative decisions are being made. And um, I think we really need to get in there and take a look at that and see how we can achieve reductions. We still have some reductions I think we can make there. Um, the university has uh, supplied you know, tremendous amount of help for my own family. I have three of my children have graduated from the University of, uh, of Fairbanks. So um, I've been involved with that university for quite some time, but I still think that we could do better. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Morris. And continuing again with House Seat 6, we have Mr. Smith. 
Well, what people should know is the university has spent several hundred thousand dollars on reports, which actually told them that they're top heavy and that they have too many programs at every campus. And uh, when they got the first report that said that, their response was to hire another company to give them another report, which told them the same thing. The problem is they've done nothing. They have not done anything to address the problems. They have made the proper cuts that are needed. And now we're in a situation where there isn't any money left and now they're really in trouble. Now they need to start deciding which campus is best suited to teach specific areas of employment and cut down on what we have. We've got history departments on all three main campuses. We've got uh, education on all three campuses. We used to have philosophy, even though there's only about three students. Uh, it's a lot of waste and we need to make sure we can get rid of the waste, specialize in what we specialize in on each campus and that will reduce overall expenditures. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Next up, we have Senate seat B, beginning with Mr. Myers. Uh, well, I have to agree with uh, Mr. Smith there on most of his comments. Uh, it's, it's time for the university to uh, change how it's doing things. It's uh, been doing things a certain way for 40 years, and they haven't acknowledged that it's time for something different to work, uh, whether we're talking about consolidating programs, consolidating the overhead, uh, whether we're uh, bunch of issues like this. Uh, just before he resigned, President Johnson uh, acknowledged that the university has, I believe it was about 15% uh, more facilities and about 10% more administration and comparably sized universities across the country. And they seem to uh, be putting blinders on and all they want to do is ask for more money. Um, we want to have a strong university here, but a strong university is going to include something that's, that's run well and that uses its resources efficiently. It's going to have to up its level of private giving, which is uh, near the bottom in the country. And it's uh, just gonna have to change how, uh, how it works uh, for things. Uh, um, to be fair, I am a philosophy major from UAF, but at the same time, I drive truck for a living. Thank you very much, Mr. Myers. Continuing with Senate seat B, we have Senator Coghill. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, return on investment, that's what we want from Alaska. Uh, from our university. And uh, that's uh, our teachers. We want our teachers. We want our paralegals. But we also want our good research. Top heavy is uh, without a doubt part of the problem. And trying to do too much, uh, too many things for too many people, uh, we're going to have to deal with. The Board of Regents have been handed a, uh, a tough budget. There's uh, no doubt about it. And uh, I'll support uh, the Board of Regents looking into their programs. But the pressure that we have from the legislature is return on investment. We want Alaskans to be able to fill our businesses uh, and uh, take care of our land, uh, do our uh, fish and game management. Uh, and so if anybody knows Alaska, it should be our university system. So I like the research part of it, but sometimes they, I'm a conservative and they chase the liberal dollar and sometimes that drives me crazy. So uh, the liberals gotta step up to the plate and look at return on investment. Thank you, Senator Coghill. Moving on to House Seat 2, we have Representative Thompson. Thank you. I'm a big supporter of the university, uh, statewide in fact. I have three of uh, my children who graduated from UAF. I have a granddaughter that's graduated from UAF, and I think it's one of the uh, most important things that we have going in our state to grow the economy into the future. We have to grow our own, just like uh, Mr. Kronk said, we need to grow our own teachers because we can't seem to get teachers to stay anywhere in the rural areas, and that's one of our big, biggest problems. But uh, at the same time, I, I've really got some confidence. The university, we've, we've reduced their budget, cut their budget by over $100 million over the last four to five years. That's a huge amount of reductions. They are addressing that with, uh, I think, well over 1,200 layoffs of, uh, of employees, so that's, that's a big start. Uh, Pat Pitney is the acting uh, president, has got some innovative ideas. I'm really looking forward to what she's going to be able to do in this, in this next year. It needs to be a single appropriation so the, the regions have the right to do what needs to be done. It, we've been doubling up on that appropriation and we need to change that. Thank you, Representative Thompson. Thank you, candidates, again. This is our final prepared question. You will have 60 seconds to respond. 
We will start with House Seat 6 again, Ms. Morris, Mr. Smith, then Mr. Cronk, followed by Senate Seat B, Senator Coghill and Mr. Myers, and then House Seat 2, Representative Thompson. Question 8. The state of Alaska is fortunate to have many natural resources, from timber to oil and gold to fisheries. Development of these resources has been a major driver of Alaska's economy from the beginning. These industries also contribute a substantial portion of the state's budget. The Fairbanks Chamber supports the development of high paying construction, production, and operation jobs resulting from resource development. Fairbanks companies are poised to manufacture critical supplies, transport equipment, provide skilled workers, and support new development. Of course, businesses must benefit both current and future Alaskans beyond providing good jobs. Our members continually and consistently demonstrate a commitment to working safely, attaining globally accepted sustainability goals, and making a positive, lasting contribution to society. What do you see as our state government's role in responsible resource development? Ms. Morris, we will start with your 60 second response. Responsible development, that's, that's really good. And what the state's role is in that is obviously, you know, we do a lot of permitting, we do a lot of regulation, and of course we tax. Um, so that's the state's role. How we approach all of those different items, um, I think we could do streamlining with regulations and with permitting so that biz it is business friendly. Um, at this point, I do not think we could do any more taxes at all on any business with the way how unstable we are. Um, so the state role is really to promote business and to promote resource development. I think it's really important that we always stay at a, um, uh, an important level of constantly moving forward um, with different uh, resource development options. Um, and that's gonna be important to um, diversify our revenue. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Morris. Continuing with House Seat 6, we have Mr. Smith. The state needs to work hard to kind of cultivate a business-friendly environment, to try to bring in more investment, uh, more uh, business opportunities uh, within the state and around the state in order to bring in more employment for those in the areas. This Ambler Road project, for example, is gonna be a great project for employing almost 500 people to on the building of this road project. Uh, but one of the problems that we run into a lot is red tape. Uh, the red tape on this project from the uh, studies that took so long isn't necessarily the cost of the studies, but the cost of uh, the construction project increasing. It has increased uh, in the expectation pricing from $450 million to over $500 million during the course of this study, which has now cost us over $50 million extra with an expectation that it could cost up to a billion dollars. So we need to start looking at these projects and try to streamline the process to get more business working faster. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Next up with House Seat 6, we have Mr. Kronk. All right, you know, first of all, we need to continue researching these areas. Um, living in District 6, rural Alaska holds the majority of the resources in Alaska. Um, we need to partner with our native corporations. They own a lot of property with a lot of resources. And without those partnerships, it's going to be very difficult to develop these resources. Um, resource development is key to education. And what, I was, what I'm saying by that is when we develop these jobs, we're going to have high paying jobs for rural Alaska. You know what? When you realize there's a need for education, our students are going to are, are going to be focused on getting educated. They know they're going to have a high paying job at home. And then that's key. It's, it's really key. I'm a rural Alaska guy and we have to develop these resources, not only for the state and the benefit of the state, but the benefit of rural Alaska and the communities um, that are in there. But partnerships are big. We need to get the red tape away and get these developments going. Thank you, Mr. Kronk. Next up, we have Senate seat B, beginning with Senator Coghill. If you don't produce off your land, then you're not going to have uh, a way to grow. And that's true of the university and that's true of the state of Alaska. 
Uh, the university, by the way, needs more land. For us, uh, access to land is a big issue in the state uh, and partnerships, as Sir Kong says, uh, is a big part because the two biggest landowners outside of the federal government are the state and the uh, native corporations. So access to land um, and then uh, reducing whatever risks we can, uh, and that is what our permitting process does. So the permits uh, need to be clear and, uh, and concise. Almost everything we do is greenfield in Alaska. And it seems like we have to pave our way through the courts in order to get something done. And, and that's too bad because it takes long-term capital to make investments in Alaska. So forestry, farming, fish, and land development, that's how we're going to grow. Sorry. Thank you, Senator Coghill. You even left us a few seconds to spare. So next up, we have continuing Senate seat B, Mr. Myers. Okay. Uh, so uh, primarily I see two roles for the state government in terms of resource development right now. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we're going to have to uh, reduce our operating budget so that we have some money available to throw into our capital budget so that we can develop the roads, the ports, the airports, and the different infrastructure that we need in order to get to access those resources. Uh, if we don't get our operating budget under control, we're never going to be able to, to develop that access. Uh, second, uh, we got to uh, do what we can to uh, keep the federal government's feet to the fire, whether we're talking about regulation, access to federal lands, things like that. Uh, let's look at Kafka and get that back up and running. Uh, Governor Walker eliminated that, and the legislature didn't put up a fight. And uh, let's use their recommendations to attack uh, what the federal government is going back on its word on, and let's get the legislature involved and have a House and a Senate representative on there that will stay involved and hold people's feet to the fire. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Next up, we have House Seat 2, Representative Thompson. Thank you. Uh, our economic development of the future is going to depend a lot on our natural resources. One of the things that we have never been able to accomplish is that we have became an extraction and export state. We need to do things that has value added from all these resources that we have. That would be a big help. One of our biggest problems with uh, economic development and res or, uh, development of our resources has been the over-regulation of the state government and the federal government. To get a, any project permitted takes forever. There are so many reports, hundreds and hundreds of things, hoops they have to jump through to even get permitted. So, so those are the big things that are slowing down economic development and investment in Alaska. The cost of energy is one of the other big things for developing anything up here. We've got to figure out how to reduce our cost of energy with natural gas generating generation and things like that. So it's going to be a tough job. Thank you, Representative Thompson. Now we will take a few audience questions. Candidates, you will have 30 seconds to respond to the first question. The order is going to be House Seat 2, followed by House Seat 6, followed by Senate Seat B. First question is for Representative Thompson with House Seat 2. What are your plans to encourage natural resource development beyond oil and gas? For example, agriculture or forestry? Well, our agriculture has been growing rapidly in the last few years, and we're seeing more and more of a need of, uh, of growing our own in food safety. I think that's important. Uh, the bridge, bridge being completed uh, down at Nenana to go over to that side of, the, of that river. I was told by the Farm Bureau that that is the richest land. It's richer land that they have in, than they have in Delta. That's going to be a big area that could be developed. Uh, we're running out of time. I'm sorry. I, should, I wanted to get into some more things with it, too, but we'll get there. Thank you, Representative Thompson. 30 seconds is very quick. Next up, we have House Seat 6, Mr. Smith. Representative Thompson is correct. The uh, the agricultural area there by Nanana is supposed to be even richer than the, the fields in Delta, which is going to be a great resource for interior Alaska and the state as a whole. And finding more locations like this would be very beneficial for all of us. 
Uh, the University of Alaska has a lot of land that just sits there vacant. They could utilize some of that area to start growing crops again and uh, start using those to generate a little bit of income for their problems as well as uh, make a difference in the, in the lives of everybody here in Alaska. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Continuing with House Seat 6, we have Mr. Kronk. I, I agree with Ryan, you know, uh, and, and Steve, um, the, uh, the Nanana area has the largest potential. We got to get across that bridge and open that area up. Um, I think COVID has really shown us the importance of being uh, reliant on ourselves. Um, I was down in Kenny Lake and you can see the people there, they have, you know, cows that they're raising out there, pigs are raising, they got fields opened up. Um, and I think that's key. You know, we need to be uh, self-sustaining in Alaska and, you know, continually to, to work to develop this kind of stuff. So we're not dependent on outside of Alaska. Sorry. Continuing with House Seat 6, we have Ms. Morris. Thank you. That's one of the better questions. I think in District 6, we have an enormous amount of natural resources, but we do have agriculture and forestry. Timber sales is going to be important. Um, there's a lot of people who would like to go out and, um, you know, cut wood. So timber sales is going to be really important. Getting the land into the hands of the people who will actually work the land. That's what's going to be important. Department of Natural Resources has to release some land into the private sector so that we can develop and we can move the economy forward and move that resource forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Morris. Appreciate it. Okay, next up we have Senate seat B. Mr. Myers. Uh, what I see is the uh, biggest promise, at least in the relatively short term, is actually in the mining sector, uh, especially as people develop more electronics. One of the uh, biggest things that we're finding a shortage of is what's called rare earth metals, which uh, the largest deposits of those being worked in the world today are currently over in China. And for economic and political reasons, we need to diversify away from that source. One of the biggest sources outside of China for rare earth elements that are necessary for electronics are in Alaska. And uh, we need to be able to open that up and we need to develop our access to get to those mines and resources. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Next up, again, with Senate seat B, we have Senator Coghill. First, let's uh, go to the feds and see if we can get the Tongass forest opened up. That's some of the best timber in the world that needs to be uh, managed properly. Uh, the forest in the interior, uh, we could probably do better on value added. And that's also true with uh, products coming out of our agriculture. We need food security in Alaska a little better. We cut our plant material center down there in Palmer. We shouldn't have done that. that that's how we prove up our, uh, our markets. So we shouldn't have done that. So uh, let's uh, have the state help uh, our agriculture. Thank you, Senator Coghill. Next up, we have another audience question and we're gonna start that with Senate seat B beginning with Senator Coghill, followed by Myers. And then we have House Seat 6, followed by House Seat 2. And you will have 30 seconds to respond. So the question is, what do you see as the most important qualities a legislator can bring to the upcoming session? Senator Coghill from Senate District B, you are first. Bring your best, best principles to the table. Uh, be willing to listen. Uh, stay open to discussion work well with the rest of Alaska, and don't give up on your uh, principles that you bring to the table, you know. Uh, the economy is definitely going to be one of the hot issues this year, and the permanent fund dividend is definitely going to be one of the tough issues. You need to be able to listen clearly, uh, but state your position clearly as well. So uh, I think uh, working together with the rest of Alaska is important. Thank you, Senator Coghill. Next up with Senate seat B, we have Mr. Myers. I would agree that our principles are important, but I think we need to uh, realize that we shouldn't be confusing our principles with our, our policies. Uh, we've got uh, our principles developed uh, 30, 40 years ago, developed certain policies, and now we've, to uh, a certain extent, taken those policies and they've become our principles. Well, let's go back to our principles and realize that times have changed and it's time to do something different. 
and uh, keep our principles, but uh, be open to change and to listening how uh, how people are being affected. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Next up, we have House Seat 6, beginning with Ms. Morris. Well, I think the most important thing that you can bring to the table is integrity. Do what you say you're going to do. Um, I think that's, that's going to be really important for Alaskans to be able to trust their legislators again. Um, too many times people have said they were going to do something and then they changed their mind and changed course without really educating their constituents as to why they did that. So integrity is really going to be important this time around. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Morris. Next up, we have Mr. Smith with House Seat 6. I would say integrity and respect, uh, the way uh, the coalition majority treated the uh, conservative minority last year in the House was one of the most disrespectful things I've ever seen. Uh, also, the way they treated the governor uh, that's complete dysfunction, and we need to make sure before the state can run off uh, optimally, we need to make sure the people in the legislature are performing their duties in a professional, respectful and manner. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Next, we have with House Seat 6, Mr. Kronk. Well, sorry, I have some dogs barking here. Uh, honesty and integrity are definitely key. Um, we need to be able to follow your values and, and, and you know growing up in small community there's community values that i i learned from my community that i'm going to stick to um you need to be firm you need to be able to listen to people um work with your team whatever group you're with you must be able to work together um you re reach across the aisle and, and work together find the common themes that we can all agree on but stick firm to our values and be honest with our constituents Thank you, Mr. Kronk. Next up, we have House Seat 2, Representative Thompson. All of the above. Everybody's had some good comments on this. Uh, very, very good. You know, we have to learn to compromise. We have to be able to sit down and work together and work out solutions that will benefit the state. And that's the biggest, the reason that we're going to Juno is we're gonna to try to benefit the state and our constituents, but the entire state in its entirety. So it's gonna be very important that we go down there with our ideals and our principles, and we stick to those, but we have to be able to sit down and work together and communicate. Thank you, Ms. Representative Thompson. So that's the end of the audience questions. To conclude today's forum, we will give each candidate 30 seconds to give closing remarks. And where we ended last, we're going to begin. So we have House Seat 2 first, and then we have House Seat 6, and then it'll be followed by Senate Seat B. So Representative Thompson, please give us your 30 seconds closing remarks. Well, we've all talked about, and we know it's going to be a very difficult time down in Juneau this year. Uh, the earnings reserve account is down to under $9 billion. It's around $8.4 billion. We've already figured out and know that, uh, that next year's draw for 2022 will be another $3 billion. That will take us down to in the $5 billion range. And we have to be careful we don't overspend that because that's our only savings that we have left because the Constitutional Budget Reserve Fund is just about drained at this time. So we're going to have to work hard. Thank you, Representative Thompson. Next up, we have House Seat 6, beginning with Mr. Smith. There that we need to have in the legislature this year is deal with uh, the state spending. That is the biggest threat we have in Alaska to our way of life and the citizens of Alaska. We need to make sure the PFD is able to be restored and given back to their proper owners, the people of Alaska, to keep the private sector economy moving. And uh, with my business experience and my financial knowledge, I have the skills and ability to make sure we get that done and get Alaska back on the right track. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Continuing with House Seat 6, we have Mr. Kronk. Um, I, I'm a 
lifelong Alaskan. I graduated. I'm a proud graduate of Walter North High School. I'm a proud graduate of the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Alaska is in my blood. The whole purpose of doing this is because I care about my state. I care about my people. Um, we do have issues. And again, we can look at them as negative or we can go down there and be positive and, and work together and begin fixing the issues that we have. We all know we have a budget problem and uh, we need to get down there and get to work, make sure the people are well represented and we do what's right for Alaska. Thank you, Mr. Kronk. Continuing with House Seat 6, we have Ms. Morris. Thank you, first of all, for all of you that are watching this. Um, this is a good time for the people of Alaska to take a really good look at your candidates and decide who is going to represent you. Um, more than ever, it's going to be really important that you pick someone with some integrity, who's going to do what they say, somebody that you can trust. This is going to be an important time for us. and. Uh, I would like to ask for your vote. Um, I will do everything I can to help Alaska. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Morris. And next up, we have Senate seat B, beginning with Senator Coghill. If we're gonna build Alaska, uh, we're gonna have to get our budget under control. And uh, part of that is uh, our responsibility in the legislature. Uh, that means if you can't share the wealth as much as you can, share what share what you can, and that's going to be a change in the permanent fund dividend formula. Uh, I hope we can get that done this year because if we're going to have a long-term plan, that's going to be a key element. And before we talk about any taxes or anything like that, reduce your government, share your wealth, and move on. Build Alaska. Thank you, Senator Coghill. Next, we have Senate seat B, Mr. Myers. Saving the best for last, I see. Uh, okay, so the question that we have to ask ourselves right now is, who's in charge here? Is it the people or is it the state? And part of the reason I got into this race is because what it seems to me is happening is that the people are being sacrificed in order to support the state. The state is the operating budget. To some extent, the state is the capital budget. But the capital budget is also what helps grow our private sector economy in the long run, and our permanent fund dividend is what helps grow and sustain our private sector economy. Time to ask us which of those two is more important. Thank you very much, Mr. Myers. I want to thank all the candidates. You all did an excellent job with the timing. I muted myself a few times, so I ruined the timing, but you guys did great. So thank you very much. Thank you again for participating in our second ever online political forum. You guys did great. We at the Fairbanks Chamber appreciate your flexibility and willingness to try this new format with us. Thank you to our audience for informing yourselves about the upcoming election in this unusual year. We will take a break from political forums next week to hear a presentation entitled COVID-19 and the Alaska Economy by Musin Gutabi from the Institute of Social and Economic Research in Anchorage. Our next political forum will take place Tuesday, August 25th, featuring the candidates for Fairbanks City Council. Please join us online for that discussion. We encourage you to cast your vote in the Alaska primary election on Tuesday, August 18th, one week from today. Don't forget that you can request an absentee ballot for the municipal and general elections online today as well. So with that, thank you all for joining us and I hope you have a great afternoon. Remember to vote. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you very much, Chamber of Commerce, for having this forum. It's been great. Thank you. Yep, thank you. All.